apparently there is a way to make uh, the small change to the GI Bill that will make kids flock to the military. So mm -hmm. as uh, this person says, uh, Bill would create a pilot program allowing veterans to use the GI benefits to start a business rather than to attend college. All right. Well, uh, well you already get uh, it, when you're a veteran, you get like uh, the VA offers a business loans to veterans. So this is nothing new. Yep. It says, uh, in the past, the GI Bill college tuition grants uh, was the military's big recruitment management, but it didn't really appeal to me. 18-year-old uh, Aiden Gilbert told Fox News, my acquaintances and peers, we thought that uh, college was is very much overrated. It is. Uh, yeah. And it could really just impede or delay an entrepreneur like myself. Facts. And of course, yeah. Yeah. Back in uh, 2017, the enrollment was just under 20 million. And last year, it is just over 18 million. So All right. Unless people are going to college, which is a, a good thing, if you ask me. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. here's the thing about the GI Bill. All right. The reason it's not as appealing as it used to be is they're giving out grants like booger sugar in some of these colleges, meaning it's free money given to them by the government. They're getting scholarships, they're taking out student loans, and they're paying for it that way. Mm -hmm. All right. So when you look at how things are, you're like, okay, I can do this and go to school well, and work a part-time job making more money than an, an enlisted, at least for the first four years. And I only have to work eight hours. I don't have to deal with, uh, you know, doing hazardous things that could possibly kill me or maim me. But over here in the service, they quite literally, uh, a fast food worker making $15 an hour will out earn a soldier in all of the branches of the service up to about four years, five years in, depending upon rank. And, I mean, so literally... You have to be in the service for half a damn decade before you're even making the same money as some dude flipping a burger and you're treated like a guinea pig. They're forcing all of this woke bullshit on you and there's nothing you could do about it. I can't in good conscience tell any young person today to willingly go into the military unless it is your absolute last option. Like meaning you are in a foster home, you age out and you have no support or anything, then I could see, hey, I got to go. And it is what it is. Yep. But uh, this kid does seem to have a, a good head on his shoulders because uh, he is the son of a Marine Corps veteran, considered the fo following in his father's footsteps until recently. He said the proliferation of woke ideology in the military prompted his decision as well as his own finances. He started a social media marketing business during his senior year of high school, and he says that has taken off. Why yeah. would I be taking classes on, Amer on why America sucks, which is what's taught in a lot of these colleges now, while my business competition mm -hmm. is getting a four-year head start on me? It just doesn't really make any sense. Yep. Yep. So yeah. at least, at least we know he's got a good head on his shoulders. So that's, you know, winning on his end. Mm. Yeah, got his own uh, business, I've... making his own money. Hell yeah. Uh, yeah, I would uh, fully agree with you, Pop. If if you don't have to go into the military, do not do that. But don't do not do it. Just don't, just don't do, it, man. Not nope. good. No. I mean, I, I just don't understand this. Like if I was in an infantry unit, and they they had a female company commander, I I would be I'd have severe reservations. All right now, I've I've had a lot of female commanders. Twenty percent of them, I would rate as decent to good. The rest incompetent. You know, toxic sons of bitches, or female mm -hmm. daughters of bitches, whatever you want to call it. A bunch <laughs> of female breed dogs is what they are. But yeah. Woo. Yep. And uh, one What's other thing point? we can take a, take a look here. Uh, let's see. Where's that at? There it is. 
Now, this covers uh, the woes of military recruitment, contributing factors and recommendations for change. So will it be able to change? It's going to take. All right. First of all, I, I wrote a whole memorandum of record. It was, I think, three and a half pages long about why the military is missing the recruitment goals. I cannot wait. Go into this and, and uh, you know, check into this and we'll see what's up. Yep. All righty. Well, we can take a look here at uh, the list here. Factors uh, contributing to the recruitment crisis is low unemployment and tight labor market. Well, we did just mm. get out of a uh, three-year lie about a bunch of bullshit, so uh -huh. that didn't help. The the word uh, lie says, is the uh, is the keyword there. <laughs> the keyword, yes. Yep. Uh, it says a small pool of qualified applicants, like what you said, Pop. You know, teardrop and Xbox bodies. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, declining test scores are a large part of effect of uh, the thing, the lie. <laughs> yep. Um, number three, lack of uh, propensity to serve. So there's a. So they just don't want to do it. Yep. Listen, the service of today is pretty much fed by the children of veterans who served prior. And now all of those guys are like, nope, you're not getting my kid. Not for this woke horse shit. Yeah. And they're literally strangling the military off from all of its recruits. Yep. And this one right here would be a pretty big one just in case if there was Fits a. It's right uh, in shit hits the fan uh, situation declining trust in the military mm. uh, says that there is a trending decline of public trust in the military. The de decline can be attributed to a few reasons. The biggest reason is attributed to an increasing perception that U S military leaders are become too involved in politics. <laughs> yep. Shocker. They are. Mm. They are. Look at Millie. Ugh, yeah. yeah. Recent survey conducted by the Reagan Foundation found 62% of respondents said they were losing trust and confidence because the military leadership is becoming overly politicized. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then, of course, they're, you know, the administration weakening military strength, promoting critical race theory and the uh, alphabet mafia individuality. Yep. But, uh, Here's some, uh, some suggested changes to resolve those issues. Uh, one says, uh, surpassing the private sector. If the military seeks to enhance quality recruits for, for civilian and non-civilian jobs, then it must focus on tailoring competitive compensation and benefits program to the unique needs of the targeted generation. So basically, they need to pay them more. Yeah. Well, that's just a bunch of word salad that saying that we don't pay our guys enough. This one, number two, is absolute bullshit. Uh, improving eligibility. With a shrinking pool of volunteers, the military needs to consider adjusting some of its outdated entry standards. Um, I'm just going to stop no, right there. Say, no, no, they're not outdated. Just because everybody's a fat fuck with pre-diabetes <laughs> doesn't yeah. mean that uh, that you should be allowed the military now. I'm sorry, God damn it. Yep. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Uh, also goes on, uh, although the military has prided itself being relatively drug-free force, uh, societal attitudes towards certain recreational drugs like the uh, Mary Jane Do Wanna has rapidly changed and led 21 states to legalize its use. Yeah, that, listen, uh, as a former senior NCO, I ran dozens upon dozens of piss tests. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to tell you right now, I absolutely hated it. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I don't know, man. It's it just uh, it's supposed to be random throughout the year. And then uh, once a year, the entire unit pisses in the bottle. So I don't know. It just yeah. uh, in my opinion, you know, it's uh, I don't think they should drug test you unless you show up and you're visibly impaired mm, and maybe yep. yeah. you know they, they if, give you a, a piss test or blood test or something yep. yeah but you also if don't need somebody that's an addict and hiding it going oh, yeah. into the battlefield either so. no, no you can't have that but like I am not a I don't know I was always paranoid when I was in the military that 
some mistake would happen. I, I, I'd get pegged on a, a piss test and ru- and they'll throw your ass out. Yeah, it doesn't matter. You can have 19 years, nine months. You piss hot. You're you're done. You lose everything. All your career. All your everything. Yep. Let's see. Uh, number three here: uh, increasing propensity to serve. Increasing the propensity to serve starts with the community outreach and building up the awareness and attract the attraction of service. Military service can expand Americans' personal connections with those in uniform by making more of an effort to get service members out in the public. Mm-hmm. In addition, the services should y- emphasize the unique nature of the service that matters to the younger generation, such as opportunities for diverse experiences, career paths within stable employment offer. You know, a great way to start with that, a really simple way to start is knowing that you're not serving a corrupt government that operates outside of the confines of the constitution. Uh, That might help a little bit. Yeah, And how about we uh, treat the service members with respect and don't treat them like fucking Guinea pigs. Mm -hmm. Yep. Those would be some pretty good starts. Yeah. And, And, Listen, I don't think they're going to be able to salvage this. No, at least not, not now. Nope. I think we're too late in the game right now, to be honest with you. Yeah. Yep. And their uh, last one here is building back trust through apolitical apoliticism. Yeah, I hate the build back and yeah. Just, yeah. No. Oh <laughs> I mean, that's a great uh, thought in theory, but we all know with what they're doing right now, for example, uh, they don't have a problem, you know, showing their, uh, their, their leftist stuff right out in the open, you know, I know. if you don't agree yeah. with it, tough shit. So this apoliticism, good luck because you already have uh, cancer growing within the branches. Correct. And like when I first came in the service, that whole you know, political game, in the enlisted ranks, it didn't exist at all. You didn't really, you didn't hear about like politics until officers got to the rank of lieutenant colonel, maybe major. And then there was a lot of politicking going on. But in the enlisted ranks, when I, when I came in, it was like, if you can do the job, we'll promote you. We mm-hmm. don't care what your politics here or any of that are horse shit. You know, just meet the standard. That's it. Mm-hmm. It's the way it should be. It's, yep. And uh, let's see. They basically break down exactly what I what you guys were saying there. You know, mm-hmm. leave the politics out of it. You know, if they can do the job, do it. Uh, let's see. It says uh, managing protests is a task f- for law enforcement, not active troops. Finally, all attempts by political leaders to politicize the military must be called out and publicly admonished by media, other politicians, or media leaders for compromising the military's nonpartisan ethic. Unfortunately, it's going to have to happen from within the service, and these soldiers are just going to have to have a uh, mutiny and everyone fill out IG complaints and Mm. and get their congressmen involved. It's the only way this is going to change. Watch Grunts Peak Live every Tuesday and Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern. And if you want to join Pop for Supporter Sundays, go to redonkulous.com slash donate and make a monthly pledge. A link is in the Meat Gazer box.